Hello guys, welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. There is a message that I want to share with you guys and this message it comes from a translation of a message that I received. Then I had to ask one of our admins to give us a translation. This is the translation of that message. The message reads like this. Hello my brother, how are you? Can you please post for me and keep me anonymous? It was in the year 2014. and at that time i was still working in south africa as a truck driver at that time we used to carry a lot of fertilizer and cement from hauteng going with that fertilizer and cement to limpopo at that company where i used to work there was this other guy whom i was working with he was from tanin that guy with all the ritualistic things that he was given in the end i don't think that he is still alive because of the evil rituals that he was made to perform and if he is still alive i bet that now he is a very rich man this guy my brother was that kind of a person that if he meets anyone who is a foreign guy he would ask a lot of things about things like sanawana even at the time when we were really close me and that guy he would never discuss anything with you apart from women and about how to get a tokoloshi or how to get rich every discussion that you will have with him it will end up in dating a lot of women or getting rich quick when he came to our company he was driving for this other trucking company that was called Taurus and from the very first day that we had to go and load together the first thing that he asked me was if i was using a baboon to drive because i was able to do a lot of loads the only reason why i was able to do a lot of loads it was because i was chasing my own target i know that i wanted to find a stepping stone so that i can come to america so a lot of money was needed for the visas and everything but i said no to him and when i told him that no i was not using any kind of a ritual so that i can drive like the way that i was doing he never believed me the reason why he didn't believe me it was because i came from the areas which are in binga and as for me growing up in binga i really didn't want any part in using rituals to assist me at work because i know the repercussions of doing those kind of rituals even now it still pains me that in our village that is where most of the people from across southern africa come to get charms so as to strengthen their businesses some healers actually come to our village to get powers but i think that yes we all have a choice so i cannot be the one to judge all of those people that are using rituals so as to perform so as to get quick money but what troubles me is that i grew up in a homestead where my own grandfather was a healer but what our people do is that one child in the family is then chosen to be sacrificed but in our culture you don't shed blood as such but that child whom you would have chosen so that he can be your sacrifice that child is either he can be born with a severe disability like being paralyzed or he or she will be born without arms or legs in our village from where i come from there are a lot of people who are like this it's either they are paralyzed so much that saliva can just be dropping from their mouth they can't even control their own mouth so this thing when i was still growing up it used to pain me a lot that child who would have been chosen will be used as a means to communicate with a higher power usually what happened is that soon after the death of that child then the powerful healer will suddenly die then the process will repeat itself again the first born in the family will inherit his father's spear walking stick and other stuff that was used by his father when he was still alive to give people rich or money and once the eldest son in the family would have accepted all of these things then that circle would start to rotate again he would also sacrifice one of his own sons or he would quickly get married to a new wife 
so that the child who will be born can be born crippled or later in life that child can become a crippled usually this thing it happens when the baby is still three months old but usually what happens is that when the baby will be born the baby will be normal but when it becomes three months of age that is when suddenly the baby will just become crippled because he would have been sacrificed at our homestead there was one round hut that had a very big drum but this drum was made of mud so what people don't know is that when you come to perform these rituals if you are given something to give you magic money that item what you do not know is that it will be the spirit of another dead man or a woman who in their own lifetime would have came to our homestead to do these rituals when they die then their souls will be trapped inside that clay drum and you will only be released when someone comes looking for charms so as to get rich quick so the cycle will never end all these things i even tried to tell my former workmate but when i told him of all of these stories this made him to even want it some more so one christmas when i was heading home he went with me I even tried to scare him that without a passport you can't go but he was quite a stubborn man me and him we got onto the car of our other workmate and we went home a couple of days later me and him we were in binga the reason why i had taken him to my uncle i wanted my uncle to give him some counseling so that he cannot proceed with this thing that he wanted but what my uncle told him is that if he was going to go ahead with these rituals then he had to know that he will be placing a curse or condemning his entire generation to a life of suffering but he said that he was here for himself and no one else it seemed as if he didn't even care about his entire generation and i didn't want to be a part of it so i left that man at my uncle's home and i went with my wife to visit her relatives in zambia i did this so as to avoid going to my other uncle who was going to help this man that i had traveled with to zimbabwe so that he can get his money making rituals because i was told that when i was young one night i had gotten out of the house whilst the doors and the windows were all locked so people didn't know how suddenly i had disappeared when i was sleeping with my other siblings so i grew up being told that my uncle he wanted to use me for a ritual so i was really scared of him since he was known to be more experienced when it came to the spells of making you go crippled i had heard stories of him just picking up some soil where you would have stepped and if he was going to use that soil he was going to control you like a kind of a remote it didn't matter how far you would go but you would use that soil that you would have picked up from the place where you would have stepped as a kind of a connection to you my workmate when he went there he was given a cow's horn but it was not that big it seemed as if that cow's horn it was taken from a young calf and he was given a root of a certain tree which he was told to always keep in his wallet at all times that sanawana that he wanted he never got it but what i heard is that the cow's horn that he was given it was breathing when it was given to him when i started sorting out my papers so that i can come here to the united states i could not go back home because at church my wife was told that my uncle kept on saying that he thought that i was too clever and now that i saw myself as being too clever i wanted now to go and live with the white people so he had laid a trap in the road for me to have an accident and i had even to stop driving until i finally came to the united states as difficult as it was but 
I had to believe that prophecy, knowing that in our village, charms to cause road accidents were so common. When my other uncle came here to bid me farewell, that is when I realized what happened to my former co-worker. Because one day, when my uncle and I were just talking, he suddenly had a slip of the tongue and he said, Where is that man that you once came with back to the village? And I said, no, I really don't know how he is now because at that time he had left our company. He was now working in Limpopo. I had, I think that he had gone back to his former company because he was having an issue with his legs. They kept on getting swollen. So he claimed that in our company someone had bewitched him because whenever he would get behind the wheels of the truck that is when his legs will get so swollen that he would not be able to drive then my uncle just laughed and said ah that one he was too forward he was given things that nobody wanted to take there is no one who is bewitching him he bewitched himself that one and those things will eat him alive when my uncle realized that he had made a slip of the tongue he tried to cover up but i had already understood what had happened to my former co-worker so what happened to him was that when one has these ritualistic spirits like they call it rukwambo sandawana or tokoloshi those things they can multiply and the owner sometimes will not know what to do or how to feed all of these spirits as they will be multiplying so usually they will pass these evil spirits to unsuspecting victims like they did to that guy from zanin to be where i am today was by the grace of god yo dear listeners right there was a message that i received then i had to ask one of our admins to give us a translation if you have any story that you want to share with us please do not hesitate to contact us via our email address